Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, E scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TV? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyer Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Say hello to your host, Steel Flyers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that was our lovely co-host, Ronies. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, it's been a little while, but uh, your host has been on the IR uh, after a little ankle surgery, but we're on the mend and getting better and getting into a show. The NHL is finally putting every team on the ice as all teams have been taken off the COVID list for the first time since the beginning of the bubble. As restrictions in each state are relaxing, the NHL has announced that many teams are now going to allow fans in the stands. Finally, we're getting butts in the seats. MLB is in full spring training mode with teams playing games and the NBA is on the verge of their all-star game. We have a lot to cover and a short time to cover it, so we're just going to get right into it. By the way, a huge thank you to our sponsor, www.cccresorts.com. Thank you very much for being our sponsor and uh, and helping us out and, and taking care of things on the sponsorship end. We really do appreciate that. Um, they're a one-stop shop for all of your uh, pet grooming needs. They have great daycare. Uh, they have an indoor and an outdoor pool, both saltwater, so uh, you can get your pet taken care of and get them daycared and all that while, they're, while you're there. A one-stop shop, www.cccresorts.com. Thank you very much for the sponsorship. So, it's been a while. Been a little while. Uh, and, 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 well, we're, we're getting on the mend. It's hard to sit in front of a computer when you yeah, sit yeah. in front of a so, computer. Yeah, so we had a little bit of an ankle surgery here now to, to fix a, uh, a broken ankle. So, uh, we're getting a little better on, on that. And, uh, uh, we haven't done a show in a little while because of that particular thing. I had to get surgery. Um, so it's been a little bit, uh, tough for me to be in front of the mic. Uh, but it's getting better and better each day, and uh, things are getting better. So, and uh, a huge thank you to the co-host who has put up with my butt <laughs> the last couple of weeks here, getting things dealing with and anything. Anyway, so uh, let's get into some good, fun things. What do you think? Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, let's talk about the NHL. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to say this. For the first time, we finally are getting fans in the stands. Which was nice. Yes. Uh, this started at the beginning of March. Uh, for the most part, um, there were Arizona, Dallas, and Florida were already allowing team uh, already allowing fans in the stands. Uh, very limited capacity at the beginning of the season. Uh, but as um, uh, restrictions are being lifted and, and things are getting better and more and more uh, the, um, the vaccine is being... Um, uh, laid out there for everybody. Well, uh, anyway. uh, yeah, uh, and, and so now we're getting, we're now allowing um, a, a very large amount of almost all of the United States teams are now allowing fans in the stands. So um, kudos to the NHL for that. We watched the Flyers game last night, and it was so great to hear them booing the refs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were doing a little bit more than booing the refs, but, 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 well. Well, the artificial noise never quite got the message across. Yeah, it, um, okay, look, it's, there's nothing like sitting in the stands, and all you hear is a, is a crescendo of fans going, ref, you suck. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do. Because, well, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was great to see uh, the Flyers fans in the stands, um, and it's great to see fans in the stands, period, all across the NHL, um, not just for the Flyers, but for almost all the teams, with the exception of the Northern teams uh, in the Northern Division, all of the, the Canadian teams uh, are not allowing fans right now because of uh, their restrictions are a little bit different than ours, and, and so... Um, they may or may not have fans this year. We're not sure. Uh, we're hoping that that's going to be the case, hopefully at some point here real soon. Uh, but until then, uh, we get to enjoy some fans here in the United States, and it's great to uh, embrace that now. And, and you're actually starting to see where a lot of the um, announcers are actually starting to say, you know, hey, uh, it's great to see the fans in the stands and all other stuff, and it's all great. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with how um it's been just about a year 
uh, since we've had fans um, and the stands, and, and, and it's taken about a year, and we're finally back to getting fans uh, in the stands. So that, that to me, um, says a lot about what's going on um, and, and how things are progressing as far it's like as... We're almost getting back to normal. I mean, it's... It's, it's a step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction. I don't want to say that because, to me, there's no more normal anymore. Well. Okay? And there's no new normal. I hate that. I freaking hate that. Look, life is life. Everything that you experience is your life. And there's no such thing as normal or abnormal or strange or weird. Okay, yeah, there are strange and weird. But for the most part, your life is your life. Okay? And you choose to live it the way you choose to live it. Okay, so there you go. That's all I got to say about that. So there, I'm off my box now. All right, back to sports. Yeah. <laughs> back to sports. Um, so we had a lot of games happen over the weekend, yes, and we the best thing was um, Hockey Night in America. Well. Well, okay. What was really amazing about this was that NBC decided to put out um, a Hockey Night in America, which was great. They had back-to-back. Uh, -back to back games, they had a game on at, at 12 o'clock or whatever, then they had a game on in, in the afternoon and then a game in the evening. And and they were all, you know, great games and, and stuff like that. But what was really amazing is that they didn't select the Flyers game that, that came on at, at one or seven as as one of the games um, uh, for, for Hockey Night in Canada because it was against Washington. It's a rivalry type game, you know, things of that nature. So, But that was not part of the NBC docket at all. Um, so, all right, um, that's kind of where I was scratching my head on that, but we got a really, uh, we got a, a lot of really good hockey games, and I love the fact that the NHL is teaming up with people like NBC, uh, to bring Hockey Night in America. Yeah. Okay, because it's, it's a great way to spread the sport, it's a great way to let the sport, um, grow its wings, if, if you will, um, with it being International Women's Day and the, um, the Women's Hockey League has been playing um, the last couple of, uh, yeah, of days. Yeah, they shut and, down for a little while. Cause yeah, COVID, yeah right? they were going to come out and do a weekend, a uh, little weekend tournament, and then they had a little COVID uh, shutdown, and now they've been back uh, playing their um, playing their little tournament or whatever they have. But I think this is amazing because it showcases exactly the women's game. And, and, you know, look, I don't care what anybody says, but to me, I think women's hockey is some of the most exciting hockey that I've ever watched because they don't play the man. Right. They play the, the puck. puck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I understand that if if you're playing in the NHL and you, you hit somebody and suddenly now they're off the puck, that's the best way to do that in the NHL. But not in in the women's league where they're poke checking and stick checking and and nudging people off the puck and not slamming bodies and things like that. Right. You know what I mean. So, but kudos to the women. Um, we we love seeing that. Love seeing them play. Um, and we hope that um, that gets to be uh, expanded upon uh, in the future. Well, the fact that states are opening up and allowing um, people to attend events now is good news for the AHL. Because they have don't usually have a lot of TV coverage, so they've really been suffering. That's the thing. You know, the, the AHL does not get part of the revenue sharing for the NHL for the TV contracts because there is no TV contracts for the AHL. And with not having fans in the stands, that's basically their only way of making any kind of money. Right. You know what I mean? And so the AHL has been back playing now for the month of February. Um, so that's another plus right. where we're getting the AHL playing again. You know what I mean? And so uh, more more and more now we're starting to see uh, uh, more and more like the AHL is playing now and, and NCAA hockey has been playing. And I think we're going to start to see more and more as things start to open up. We're going to start to see more and more of the minor leagues starting to play and things of that nature as well too. So. Um, hockey just seems to be getting better and better. Um, the games just seem to be getting better and better. And I think we've watched some of the best hockey that we've ever watched in a really, really long time. So here's my question for you. Do you like this condensed format? No. You, would you rather have it spread out? Yeah. The reason why is this. Because you're playing a game every other night. Or every night. Right. And you're playing four, sometimes five games a week okay now that's 
that's great if if you're a fan and you're watching it on TV because that means that every night there's at least two or three really good games on okay the problem is is that for the teams because there's no rest there's no practice um, let me repeat that again there's no practice that is hurting teams more so than anything else. Look, I get it. You're playing so many games in such a short amount of time that that kind of acts like practice. But if you're trying to learn a new a style or trying to learn a new technique or you're trying to learn a, a better way of, of approaching the puck as a goalie or if you're trying to learn a different way of... Or you of, just want to hone the skills that you have without the pressure hey, of the game. You know what I mean? Gosh, it would be nice to be able to just run through some drills. Right. You know, look, and that's the thing. And and what the Flyers did when they had their COVID uh, shutdown was the final um, couple of days there, they were able to get in a couple of practices. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's... That's the reason why I'm not a fan of this condensed schedule, because it just does that. It condenses everything. Yes, it's great for the TV markets, and, and yes, it's great for the fans, because we're getting a quote-unquote season. Right. Okay, it's, it's only 56 games, but we're getting a season in. We're going to get a Stanley Cup playoffs and all that other stuff, and we're going to get some kind of, you know, some it's better than nothing. Right. You know what I mean? We're happy. We're very happy that there's NHL. I just want to know how you felt about because going forward, do you think there'll be some changes? Okay. In some of our other shows that we have on the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, like Off the Wall Hockey and Hockey Writers Inc., we've discussed this at length about what the schedule would be like after we get through this season right. and what the schedule would be like next year. Obviously they wanna have eighty two games again. You know, right. um, that's kind of the thing. Uh, but being able to, uh, how they're going to schedule games and how they're going to schedule things. Because obviously um, this year the um, divisions were put together because of the COVID and everything like that. And, and once the travel and exposure and all that. And right. And once the COVID restrictions are lifted, then, then we're going to go back to our original divisions. And, and that right there is... Because now you're going to, the, the, the northern teams are going to be sprinkled in. And and the teams that are out west are going to actually be playing the teams out west instead of playing the teams that they normally don't play. Right. You see what I mean? So, and and I think that's going to that's gonna have another major effect. And I also think, too, this is one of the things that I do like about this. Okay. Is that each team plays little mini series against other teams so like um washington and buffalo p play three games in a row right you know boston and new jersey play three games in a row philadelphia or uh, uh chicago and tampa bay play three games in a row philadelphia played pittsburgh three games in a row i mean you're starting to see that now okay and i would much rather see that during the regular season than what the NHL has been doing over the last couple of years, where they've made sure that each team got to be in each arena. Right. That means that Alex Ovechkin gets to play out in L.A. and gets to play in Calgary and gets to be in those off-market areas like Florida and California and stuff, and they get to see Ovechkin. And those right. games usually always sell out. You know what I mean? And 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 that's. That helps with the revenue sharing. Right. You've okay. said that before. Yeah. Okay. But what I would like to see the NHL do is adopt more of what they're doing this year. Where instead of sending teams out for their West Coast swing, where they play the Sharks and, 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 uh, the, Kings. and, and the Kings and Arizona and, and you know, the, and Colorado and Vegas and, you know, they, they do the West Coast swing. So that every team gets to be in every arena. Well, why not do it like what they're doing now, where you're you're playing more of your divisional teams in little mini series, like they do it in baseball, okay? And instead of having teams do a home at home series, just do it one place at one time for each, and then every other year. So every other year, say Boston would go to San Jose, and then the next year San Jose would come to Boston. So you're saying play like three games in a row in Boston between Boston and San Jose? Mm-mm. No. 
No, what I'm saying is like once the, the divisions are re put back together. Right. Okay. And Boston's in the same division as, you know, the Rangers and, you know, whatever. Where they work, yes. So make them play little three game series. Because we, we play each division uh, pl uh, uh, team now, and you play them five times. Right. So you play a home to a back to back or a home to home. Or three in a row. Or three in a row. Well, not, you know, you don't play three days in a row. You play a game, have a night off, play a game, have a night off, and play a game. But they're right. all against the same team. Right. See what I'm saying? That's kind of like what baseball's doing. Why can't NHL do that? Gotcha. And then, and, and then when you have that oddball game that's against San Jose, because you're Boston, you go out to their building this year, next year, they come to your building. Right. They cut down on travel and make it a little more competitive and... And you're going to get to see that playoff-style hockey that everybody covets. Because, look, after you play a team for the second night in a row, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot more chippiness. Well, I, we've seen that this season. Exactly. And, uh, unfortunately, some people are taking it to an extreme. Well, uh, well. But, but that... Familiarity breeds contempt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So put them all on the same ice, more and more. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> it's a good idea. What do you think? I like, like you said, the, the like three games in a row with the same team. I think that's an interesting concept because you do get that um, conflict and, and, you know, you get that. Animosity. Um, motivation. Hey, they beat us last night. We got to win tonight. You know what I mean? So it does increase that, I think. And I think it would be better for teams if they didn't have to go from the West Coast to, like, you know, Colorado to Indiana or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, they're not bouncing around as much. I, I think they're, would... they're traveling thousands and thousands of miles. I mean, I'm sure week. they don't care, but... Mm. Actually, they do. Do they? Well, yeah, think about that. If you're in San Jose one night, right, you play a game at 7 o'clock, which is is 7 o'clock their time, right? Uh -huh. And you're from you're from Boston, right? And and, and now you're, you're done with your game at 10 o'clock, but it really feels like 1 o'clock in the morning. Right. Right? And now you only get to sleep for a little while, and, and the next day you, you got to... Another game. You have to fly back... Right. To across the United States or to another city set up. You know, so so basically what that means is that after the game, you don't really go to sleep. You fly to the next city and then sleep that next day and everything right. in that next city. So, but that would remove some of that, you know. Right. They wouldn't have to do that all the time. Right. I don't know. I just think it would be a good idea to have them, have them change it up a little bit. And, and make it a little bit more like that. Because I think I would much rather watch Boston and Tampa Bay play than Boston and San Jose. Well, I'm, that uh, makes sense. Okay, I would much rather watch Boston play Toronto than Boston play Calgary. Okay. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I, I don't really care about that. The only time I want to see that is during the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So... I don't know. I I understand why they did it. They did it for the revenue sharing so that all the big names could be in all of the markets. You know what I right. mean? Right. So if you're a Caps fan, you can see them at least once a year. Well, and it's... And you live in, in San Diego. Yeah, but but the thing is, is that if you're a Caps fan and you live in San Diego or San Jose San or Jose, wherever... Sorry. Um, you're going to pretty much be guaranteed that when, when Washington Capitals do come, that that game's going to be a sellout. Right. Okay. And, and there's going to be a lot of revenue generated. Look, there's a lot of revenue generated with a sellout in a hockey game. Not only do you have approximately nineteen to 20,000 captive people that are buying your drinks, your well, your beers, your food, your T-shirts, your, you know, whatever. We hey! Don't, we don't know post-COVID if the arenas will ever be filled again. I have a feeling that it's not going to take long. I have a feeling that's not going to take long, and we're going to see more and more restrictions are going to be lifted. Because, look, here's my philosophy about this whole COVID thing, and this is just me and my opinion, okay? 
and I'm allowed to have it because it's me and my opinion. There's, we're never going to get to a zero number. There's never going to be a, a time and a place where we're going to say, okay, COVID's gone, we're good, everybody's cool, we can go back to normal. Right, that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen again. This is just going to be like one of those things where uh, when smallpox became a, a major factor and then they had the vaccine and got rid of it. People still talk about it. People still get vaccinated for it, but there's no disease. You see what I'm saying? Right. This is, I think this is going to be the same thing that's going to happen with the COVID, where there's never going to be a zero number, and it's just going to be one of those things where, okay, it's COVID season, you know, oh, it's COVID season, yeah. and, and it might be February to, to March, it's COVID season, or it's flu season, or it's, yeah. pick one, you know what I mean? It's going to have to, it's just going to be like that, and and, and you can't shut down states and stuff like that for something you know what i mean well i mean i don't think we're gonna get to that extreme again i hope but anyway so let's get off of let's get back on topic (laughs) sorry we we, uh, all right we got a little let's talk about sports let's talk about sports we can talk talk about about sports sports. yeah we can talk about sports all right so um one of the things though that i have to say about the nhl is this is that they finally got past the point where they had a bunch of teams that were on the COVID list and they had a, a bunch of teams that were postponing games. And we are now finally, all teams are all playing now. Right. Now, now occasionally you'll get a player that'll go on the COVID list for a day or two and then, or, or whatever, and then come off. Right. That happened with Sidney Crosby. Recently. Right. But I think that was more of a contact, contact tracing thing where, cause he was only on the COVID list for one day. Okay. Okay. And also, the NHL also instituted a more rapid testing um, test. Okay. Um, that um, they did that, I believe, at the beginning of March as well, too, where now players are getting tested with a more rapid test. So that allows them to obviously gain knowledge faster so they can separate those players out sooner and, and quarantine them sooner and not have it spread throughout the rest of the team. Right. Because, you know, look. <clears throat> All you have to do is turn on a hockey game from a year ago or two years ago, and during the winter months, you'll hear one of the announcers say, well, the flu's running through the team right now. Yeah, I remember that. You oh, know? the flu's running through the team right now, and, and you'll have one or two guys that'll miss a game or two because they got the flu. Right. You know what I mean? Or whatever the case is. And then they're back the next couple of... That, that's how this COVID thing is going to be. Okay. That's exactly... To me, in my opinion. Okay. Because you can't keep shutting things down if one or two players comes up positive. Uh, okay, you can't shut the, down everything because of that. I think the NHL is kind of the testing ground for that, almost. Like, they're the first ones that came up with a bubble. They're the first ones who are, like, you know, reintroducing their season. And yeah, and they did how, it before everybody else did. You um, know, It's between the NHL and the NBA. And well, I, I think the NBA seriously dropped the ball. Because... They didn't. They had a bubble, but it wasn't a. It wasn't a true bubble. Well, yeah, that was last year. So. But that's what I mean. Yeah. They tried to come back and play, and they said, "Yeah, everybody can come to this one town." But but then they didn't. They after that they were just like, "Okay, whatever." Yeah, and, and then they had a lot of guys that tested positive, and a lot of you know they had a lot of issues. Right. You know where <clears throat> the NHL came out and said, "Look, you want to come back and play? Cool." If you want to opt out, you can opt out, no problem. But if you want to come back and play, you have to test negative. Before and then, you leave. Bef- before you're allowed to access the facilities of the team, you have to test negative. After you test negative, you come into the facilities, that's it. You're done. You're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. You're staying at your hotel. You're wherever. Right. Wherever the team goes, that's where you're going to be. Right. Okay, and they agreed to that so they could get the playoffs and the Stanley Cup and all that other stuff. What was really amazing is that over three thousand tests or whatever or however many tests they did, and there was not a single case of positive from what what the, all them people up there did. Right. Okay, so that goes that goes to show you that there is the capability of doing things. 
And there was a lot of people up there, 1,600 players, just in the players, 1,600. Right. And then uh, all the coaches. And, and then all the, the coaches and staff and blah, blah, blah. And then all the people up there that it's running the place. Right. That's keeping the arena up and running. That's working the cameras. That's working the lights. That's work, you know. Broadcasters. Whatever. And... Exactly. Except for Gritty, who wasn't allowed. He, he, right. He, he made it to Toronto. Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Miss those videos. I know. I do, too. Okay. Um, so let's talk about another sport for a few minutes. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in the NFL. Um, one one particular team that I would like to particularly address is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I know we're, we're kind of being homers and all that other stuff, but uh, Ben Roethlisberger has um, re-signed a contract to, to play uh, for 2021. Um, basically what he did was he restructured his contract to make um, his salary that he was supposed to get paid was put into a signing bonus for the most part. He took a $5 million pay cut and is only going to get count uh, $14 million against the books this year, saving the Steelers um, $15 million in cap space Which for this I year. think is amazing. Also, the fact that the Pittsburgh Steelers have had Marquise Pouncey has retired. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. That's going to hurt because that is a, a perennial Pro Bowl caliber center that's now not there. I know. Okay. What I think is funny about Marquise Pouncey, though, is that his brother also retired. Yeah. So they both decided well, we're going to retire. We're, we're going to retire, yeah. Well, his, his brother, they both went to the same college in, in Florida. And then I believe his brother was originally drafted by um, San Diego. And then I don't know where he's playing now. But um, the fact that we lost him, the fact that um, uh, Alejandro Villanueva is not going to be re-signed. Yeah, I heard that, too. Okay. Um, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are, are still facing a huge salary cap issue. Still. But they're not the only team that has that issue, are they? <sighs> True, but not quite to the extent that the Steelers have it. Okay. okay. There's other teams that are up against the cap, but see, that's the other thing, too. The cap is not really do going anywhere. It's not helping them, um, especially for, you know, in, in the NFL right now. And that's going to mean that there's going to be some players that aren't going to be signed for the Steelers. That's just how that's just how this is going to have to to, to to shake down. And there's a lot of guys that need contracts. Right. Okay. And there's just going to be some of them that aren't going to get them. Okay. Juju Smith Schuster is one of them that pops to mind. Okay. That hurts. Joe Hayden pops to mind. That hurts. Uh, yeah. That that hurts. Um, Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree. Okay, um, Mike Hilton. Okay, these are some of the players that um, David DeCastro. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, you have to weigh out what you want to be able to do here because you're not going to, I mean, I, I think the window is closed. I, I really do. I think last year was was the last shot at our window um, because of the the team that was on the field, and they showed it for the first eleven games. But the coaching staff was not able to maintain that throughout the rest of the year, and I feel that's why why well, there the was a were. lot of factors in their in their implosion. But, you, you mean know. there was a lot of Feekners in there? Well, there was also the fact that they had and there were some Randys. Some. And there were some Feekners. <laughs> they were playing a lot of games back, not, you know, back to back, but they had no break. They started getting a lot of injuries. There was some COVID issues. A lot of things just added up that at the end of the season, it just fell apart. So. Yeah, there, were, there was a lot of situational Tomlin fails. There, there oh, were. did I say that out loud? You did. No, oh, okay. Um, you know, times where we should have gone for the field goal, but we didn't because we couldn't. Anyway. Um, you heard it here now, folks. I think Mike Tomlin's on the hot seat. If he doesn't do anything good this year, he should be gone. Yeah, I think if the coaching changes doesn't alleviate some of the issues, I think Tomlin's going to be... When the ownership comes out and says that they're not going to re-sign certain coaches, that the, the head coach is selected to be on the team, that's usually the writing on the wall. What do you think of the new defense, um, offensive line coach? 
I am not happy with the new offensive line coach at all. All they did was take the, the assistant from the guy that was doing it the year before, who failed, who got fired, who wasn't re-signed. What? Wait a minute. You're bringing in the assistant? Well, he's going to have the same philosophy. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll have learned from his boss's failures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, let me um, change the subject slightly. I have two questions for you. Okay. Realistically, next year may be the last year for Ben. Probably. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, of the trio, he's the only one still playing. Eli, no, Ma- Eli Manning's oh, retired. Yeah, yeah. Eli Philip Manning. Rivers is retired. Yeah, Ben's the only one left. Ben's the only one playing. Yeah. What are we? What are we gonna do? We don't have a backup quarterback. He ain't on the roster now. Uh, what's his name's not gonna be able to do it. <laughs> the guy that's gonna replace Ben Roethlisberger is not on the roster right now, in my opinion. So that means we have to draft somebody. We need a quarterback desperately. Yeah, and 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 the only way that's gonna happen is if Pittsburgh. Pulls a <clears throat> out of their you <clears throat> to 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 get a number one draft pick that's going to be worth anything. No, we're not going to do what the Dolphins did and try to tank a season just to get the. No, 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 no. We're already past that point. What I'm trying to say to you is that in order for Pittsburgh, there's there's some pretty decent quarterbacks available in this year's draft. So if Pittsburgh wants one of them quarterbacks, they are going to have to pony up. Gotcha. They're going to have to. Make some trades and make it happen because right now they're picking twenty first, yeah, or something stupid, and and that doesn't you know, that's not getting you a that's not getting you a Roethlisberger replacement at, at that pick. Well, Ben wasn't like in the first round, was yes, he? Yes, he was. was ben he? Ben Roethlisberger was eleventh overall selected in two thousand and four oh, draft okay. by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's some other things too, though. Uh, oh wait! I Cam forgot. Newton is a free agent, and they're thinking that he might go back to the Patriots. I think that's the best move for him. I don't think he did well. I, I don't think he did well, but he had COVID, and then he was he had um, an injury there, and and stuff like that. So I th- I think that's the best place for him is to go back there, and play. I don't think Bill likes him. Well, he hasn't never come out and said that he didn't, but until then, but everything that Cam Newton has. Co- come out and said has been nothing but positive for New England and, and he would not necessarily have a problem. With it. I, I think that's a good move for him there, either there or Chicago. So I have a, I told you I had two questions. This is my second question. Alex Smith has been cut from the Washington team, officially. So, since we need a backup oh, right man. now. Well, we already got another guy from Washington. Which guy? Uh, the guy that they cut. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so they cut their two quarterbacks. Um, I, I can't even think of his name. Haskins. That they drafted in the first round out of Ohio State two years ago. He barely saw the field. He was let go by the team because he didn't follow the rules. And then Mike Tomlin was like, I'll take you. Whoops. Huh? If, if he'd have just waited, you'd have could have gotten Alex Smith. Right. Because I guarantee you he'd have been a heck of a lot. Well, anyway, I, I think Alex Smith is going to find a home. I, hope I don't he think he's going to be a starting quarterback per se. No, but he'll be a backup. Somewhere. But I think he will find a home somewhere as a backup unless they like maybe bring him into Denver. You know what I mean? Or or potentially even maybe Chicago or you know I mean it. It's all going to depend. I mean, uh, I've been hearing um, uh, rumblings of Deshaun Watson going to uh, Miami, uh, but that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that when you just drafted Tua Tonga Vailoa? And why would you bring in, you know, I mean. No, that makes no sense. Because he's been doing, he did really well last year for the amount that he played. And yeah. Uh, although they're saying he's injury prone, but but still. Um, you, you, I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. It's going to be interesting because he doesn't want to be in Houston. And he's already asking to be out. Okay, so Houston's going to either have to find somebody to dance with or this cat's going to probably sit. Boy, Houston is a sinking ship, isn't it? 
J.J. Watt signed with the Cardinals. Right. Right? And did you Thank hear... Thank goodness that we don't have to play against him. Yeah, but I wouldn't necessarily mind because he's only on the field for 70% of the games anyway. So right. well, they, anyway. they just paid $15 million a year for somebody who's only on the field for 60% of the time. And when he is on the field, he's only at 80%. <laughs> well... Not that that's bad, per se, because let's but face it, J.J. The... Watt is probably going to go into the Hall of Fame as one of the best defensive ends ever. Okay, cool. You have to look at something, though, with that. He has a talent. He didn't have a team. Exactly. Now, that, now he has, does he have a better team that will showcase that talent? With Arizona? Yeah. Well, they've got some offensive weapons there on Kyler Murray, and, and, and they went out and got that, that other guy from Houston. <laughs> the, the receiver, right, um, uh, uh, Deshaun Watson, mm -hmm. or Has whatever. The, the guy, getting all mixed Yeah, up. well, they're all kind of the same name anyway. Um, but but uh, Arizona picked up that guy from Houston last year, and now they're bringing in J.J. Watt, and they got Kyler Murray, and they already had a pretty decent defense to begin with. Right. You know what I mean? So Arizona is slowly climbing out of the hole and, and becoming more and more relevant. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. This year is going to be really crazy because I think that we're actually going to have training camps going to start on time. It would be nice to have a training camp. Well, they had a training camp last year. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. Well, they did, but it, it was just three months. It wasn't a real training camp. Well, no, it wasn't three months. It was like 60 days and there was no preseason games and there was, there was no... There no real practices and... Well, there, there was practices. Oh, there was practices, but but there wasn't really there was no scrimmages or there was no preseason games or anything right. like that. I'm going to be interested to see how some of these players shake down into some of these other teams as the teams as the the year progresses. Uh, March 17th marks um, the date that um, players are put on the free agent list. Okay. Okay, and then I think. Um, I think either the, uh, a day or two before or a day or two after are, are um, who, you, who you have to declare to be on the um, franchise tag list. So there's some dates that are coming up here soon that are going to signify the start of the, the, the football year and all that other stuff and, and things of that nature. And, and we're getting into a uh, time now where you know free agency is going to start to, you know, that's going to be available here on the 17th of March. Right, um, so we're know. getting some news coming up. Yeah, uh, plus the fact that there some players have requested some trades and, you know, some things have gone down and, and where, you know, we saw Ben Roethlisberger sign, uh, we saw J.J. Watt sign uh, with Arizona, uh, right. you know what I mean? So there's been a couple of little moves and stuff, so um, it's going to be interesting to see how this year is going to shake out uh, and, and how things go um, as far as that's concerned. Um I'm I'm very cautiously optimistic about the Steelers' chances because I think Connor's not going to be back, and I think some other players are not going to be back, and it's going to be a much different team than what was on the field this past year. And I'm looking forward to offensive coordinator, coordinator being somebody who understands how to hand off the ball. Or run the ball. Or run the ball. Or, or not run the same play over and over again and wonder why it's not working. Or when it's fourth and three on the one-yard line that you kick it for the points. Or, you know. or, you know, do a quarterback sneak and shove Ben in there or, you know, <laughs> something. Going to the outside and trying to – it doesn't work. Something. You know, yeah. All right. Wait, I have one more thing before you say All right, that. okay. I want to say that um, I want to give a, a, a mention to Ryan Switzer, former player. And his son is having some medical issues, so we just want to say we're sending out some prayers for him and his baby Christian, and hope everything's okay. Yeah, uh, always, uh, always like to uh, give shout outs, especially to um, you know players who uh, are having issues and stuff. So he was a former player, Ryan Switzer. Um, he was uh, released this past year. So <clears throat> all the all the best to you. So what do you think? Um, we got. Uh, Games are being played in the Major League Baseball now. Spring training. Spring training. And we got the Grapefruit Leagues going. And, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I think they call it, is it the Desert League? They call it, um, I thought it was like the Sunshine League or something. Well, the Grapefruit League is Florida. Right. 
And then I think it's the the sunshine might be out in the desert. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Baseball teams are playing, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to have an extended uh, kind of training camp, kind of preseason here a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to start April 1st is when we're going to have the first game. It's the Cactus League. The Cactus League. There you go. All right, so the Cactus League is up and running, and the Grapefruit League is up and running, and and we're, we're having baseball, and uh, I'm going to tell you something. It's B Major League Baseball needs to get their head screwed on. They've had a lot of issues the last couple of years besides COVID. They've had some cheating scandals, and they've had some... some uh... Yeah, yeah, they have. So. You know what I mean? And, and so that's the thing where... I just uh, here's what I think is going to happen. I think there's going to be a work stoppage in, in Major League Baseball. Why do you think that? Because they have not agreed on a new collective bargaining agreement. Okay, okay. and 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 it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. Okay, and I, I think we're going to have a work stoppage after this season because the teams or the ownership and the players are so far apart with where they want to be and, and how things are going and how they tried to do things with the return to play last year. That, that was a disaster. Okay. And, and now, now, now there's no collective bargaining agreement and the players are going to be like, look, we need some stuff. Stump, something's going to have to happen. And I think we're, we're, I don't think, I don't think we're going to see baseball after this year. I think there's going to be a work stoppage or a strike or something. I just well, maybe, have that feeling. I don't know. Baseball seems like it's uh, fading a bit to football, to basketball. You know, it used to be like everybody loved baseball, and now it's kind of everybody still loves baseball, but yeah, they they keep giving themselves black eyes by doing these dumb moves and and making themselves look bad. Right. You know what I mean? And that's not how you win. That's not how you put people in the seats. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but. Um, the opening season, uh, opening uh, opening day is going to be the 1st of April. And uh, my biggest questions on this is going to be, um, can the Dodgers repeat? Okay. Um, will they be able to, will they be able to do it? And, and, and can Tampa Bay come and make it back as well? I don't know. We'll you have know, to see. Because those were the two teams that went to the uh, World Series uh, and, and the Dodgers did win it. Um, can they repeat? And, and can Tampa Bay, can the Rays come back and, 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 and try to try to be back there? You know, that's going to be... Tampa Bay's had a good year. Yeah, it seems like uh, there's been a lot of good things happening down there in Florida. Uh, let's see. Um, Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup. Right. Uh, the Tampa Bay baseball team went to the World Series. They didn't win, but, but they, they went to the it. World Series. Uh, football team made it to the Super Bowl and won Thank from Tampa Bay. And and so it's been a good year for Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we had that once in Pennsylvania where we had the Stanley Cup, the Lombardi Trophy, the um, Phillies won the World Series, and the Bears won the um, Calder Cup. The Calder Cup. Was that in 76? No, no, no. That was, um, was when... Way after uh, it was when we were together, so it had to be sometime. Okay, last all right, no, 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 okay. The Flyers have only won the cup twice, 75, no, no, no. 76. Pittsburgh won the top. The we don't count them, oh, they, they don't count. What Pittsburgh? Who there's still a Pennsylvania wait, team. wait, did you just say Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, oh no, 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 Phillies, Hershey Bears, yeah, 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 I know, I got you. And I actually, I actually got to go to the state capitol. Uh, my mom was still working at the time, and they had all three trophies um, at the state capitol at the same time. They had the Stanley Cup uh, trophy was there, the um, World Series trophy, and the Lombardi trophy was right. there. So they had all three of them there. You got I, your picture taken with them. Yep, got my picture taken with them. So I've, I've actually been um, within breathing distance of the <laughs> Stanley Cup. I couldn't touch them, man. I just wanted no, to touch it. No, couldn't touch them. <laughs> no, no, we're not, not allowed to touch them. But but I was I was within breathing distance of the actual um, Stanley Cup, and and I was able to um, um, be close enough to see um, slight little 
you know, um, fingerprint marks on on uh, Lombardi. The sticky Lombardi. Um, and and was able to to all at the 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 World Series trophy is just so um, it's so uh, articulate and it's so um, there's a lot of like design and filigree and stuff in it. And it's just it's it's one of the cooler trophies out there, uh, you know. Um, obviously, the Chalice, Lord Stanley Chalice, is the one. Of course, it's and, called the Commissioner's Trophy, by the way. Yes, and then and then the um, the uh, Sticky Lombardi, right? You know, which everybody's fingerprints and everything. That's the one I would like to see. That's the that's the trophy I want to see. The one that's been passed around to everybody. That's got stains on it and Gatorade on it and you know whatever and saliva, what, and saliva and, and fingerprints and goo and some <laughs> tape is on it or you know whatever. That's the trophy I want to see because that's the one that means. That's the real trophy. You know that shiny thing that they put in the case. That's that's not really how it is. You know because you may have a perfect record but you never have a perfect season. Right. You know what I mean. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about that. But um, kudos to uh, Major League Baseball for being able to play uh, and start uh, on the first. Um, also, the uh, NBA All Star Game was on the seventh. That was just this past weekend. So um, that was good that the NBA was doing that. Right. Um, I I have to say this though. Um, it the NBA has also stumbled. A few steps. Okay. Uh, when they did their return to play, they stumbled a little bit. Right. Well, and we were all still learning, and it's just something we've never had to deal with before. And Okay, but uh, what I mean by stumble is um, letting your players go out for wings. They didn't let them. The players decided to do that on their own. I mean... I mean, these are adults. You can't, you know, necessarily put them in the corner because they were bad. Which is probably right up there with a certain team in Washington Capitals that went out on, to the bar. They didn't go to the bar. They went all went to Alex Ovechkin's room. It was all the Russians from the team. They got it. They uh, kind of had their own little party in his room, and, and that didn't go over very well. Well, no, because everybody had to be on the protocol list because of that. And actually, two players did get COVID because of that. So, Yeah! Um, are you guys, do you, uh, are you getting it? Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, here's the one thing that I have to say is really amazing is what I was blown away by and everything that I've seen with the NBA this year is that the Sixers are leading the East. I know. Wasn't that amazing? Wait a minute. What happened? That explains why the Flyers. Here's what happened, right? Uh, here's what happened. Kawhi Leonard, right? AD and, and LeBron all went out West. Okay. Right? So that's why in the Sixers, hey, we're the only ones here in the East. <laughs> Everybody else is playing out in L.A. or wherever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> they have Ben Simmons, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Joe and B. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. Oh, dude. Um, the, uh, oh, well, I'll tell you later. Okay. Well, so much for that funny it, story. Well, no, what happened was David, my one of my supervisors, brought in a, a, com a company or a, a tour from another country. And one of the things they got to do was um, tour the Wells, Wells Fargo Center. Oh, cool. And um, I asked, oh, how did that go? And he said, oh, they, I said, were they excited about the Flyers? And he's like, oh, no, 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 they're all about basketball. And they wanted to see Ben Simmons. And I said, oh, okay. China. Because Lithuania is where they were from. Okay, well, so uh, some of the a lot of the European countries like Lithuania, Croatia, Germany, um, and China are Czech big, Republic. Czech Republic are also big uh, uh, basketball um, places as well too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they usually put up really good Olympic teams um, from those from mm -hmm. those countries as well too. So they're very pretty much invested. So um, and 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 in China. Uh, the NBA is huge. Right. Um, yeah. We already knew that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there were some issues last year before COVID hit about right like, China and all that, but that seems to have gone away. <laughs> considering, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so how about that? The Sixers are leading the East, and right now, cur right currently, the Utah Jazz uh, have the best record in the NBA. Um, this was two days before the break. They were 27 and nine, so they had the best record in the NBA right now, um, out in the West. Um, so maybe they can continue on, and, and maybe they maybe we'll see the Jazz versus the Sixers uh, for the uh, final there. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Who that knows? That would be cool. All right.
F one. F one. This is our this is our last topic that we're going to get into. Um, because we're getting ramped up for that now too. Yes, we are, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this because we had a lot of moves, mm -hmm. um, and uh, F one has been ramping up with their w winter testing. Um, as of the broadcasting of this show, uh, the Mercedes, the Red Bull, the Aston Martin, the Alfa Terrace teams have all revealed their cars. Uh, we will be getting the Ferrari to be released on the 10th, on and around the 10th. Um, they're actually doing, uh, for the company, they're releasing it today, the 8th, and then for the public, they will be releasing it on the 10th or the 11th for the Ferrari new F1 car. Okay. Um, it's going to be exciting because they're saying that the, the Ferrari has um, made up the difference in horsepower. I hope so. They, <laughs> they've had a couple really rough seasons. Uh, that would be putting it mildly, not to mention the fact that... Mm, this is one of the things I want to get into. Can the newly re-signed Lewis Hamilton repeat... Of course he can. He will. I guarantee it. I will guarantee Lewis Hamilton will win this year, and then he's going to retire. Or is that? Oh, how I would like for that to be halfway true. <laughs> I wonder which half. The fact that he retires after this year? Yeah. Can that happen? He is only signed for one year. I know. It's a lot of freaking. Well, he's Lewis Hamilton, so... But it's for one year. Right. All right. Which kind of means that he's going to try and go for it this year, and if not, then he probably will retire next year. Hopefully. Can we see this guy retire maybe? I'd just like to see someone else run away. I, I, I would like to see this guy retire, like, like this year. Yeah, can, can he retire this year? Okay. Um, here's the other thing I want to say, too. Can Leclerc lead the Prancing Horses? Because Vettel's not there now. I know. I know. I mean, what do you think? I think he can do it. I think he can, I think too. He, I think he was... He was already doing it. I think he was doing better than, than Vettel last year. Yeah. I yeah, no, I agree. Back. Yeah, I agree. 100%. So, here's my other thing about F1 this year that I think is so cool, is Nick Schumacher. Oh, man. How cool is that? Just the fact that he's in F1, even uh, if he doesn't win, he still made it to that. I was going to save that one for last because I, I just wanted to see if, uh, you know, I, I think Leclerc can lead the Prancing Horse team. I think that, or Leclerc um, can, can do it really well with having Vettel out of the shadows now or having Vettel out of the way and him being the clear number one. Right. I think Leclerc is going to take the, the bull by the horns, literally, uh, and, and put Ferrari at the top where, where they belong. Um, I think Verstappen is going to be in the mix if Red Bull can stay. If Red Bull can stay, right. if their availability is there, then I think Verstappen definitely is going to be in the mix. Yep. But if he can't keep a car under him, then you can't win races if you don't have a car. Exactly. So, I also want to say this too: the United States team, the F1 Haas team, is employing uh, Mick Schumacher. Um, that is. Um, that's a, it's a big thing. And they're going to probably have to find another driver, don't you think? They are employing the son of Michael Schumacher. And that's, it's very moving. And like I said, even if he doesn't win a, a race, if he only goes for a little bit, yeah. at least he's made it to that point he's won in the lower championships Mick Schumacher has um, the fact that he's even racing um, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about his style about his talent about how well he drives they're not even comparing him to his dad really yeah I mean they're saying that he has a bit of a different style a bit of a different mm -hmm. he still has okay look he's still young too if you've ever seen Schumacher race, Michael Schumacher or even Ralph mm. Schumacher, those guys are so driven. I mean, when they put the helmet on, man, it's all about that. Okay. Right. So he might have a different style than his dad, but when he puts on the helmet, he still has that Schumacher 
drive, right. that that Schumacher stare, that you know, gonna get it done. And the fact that he's driving for the United States Haas team, yeah, man. That's so cool. another reason to, to root for Ferrari, another reason to root for uh, Formula One, and another reason to root for the Formula One uh, United States team. So mucho apreciado for that. Um, thank you for um, dealing with my little emotions there. <laughs> Michael Schumacher is. He's missed. He's very missed because of what happened. Right. And he was such an ambassador to the sport, and he was just one of the best race car drivers ever, and he was such a humanitarian. And the fact that we get to see his son... So, sorry about all that. I had to do that. Because, Michael Schumacher, this is, uh, we're eight years now since his um, accident. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't really gotten any better. And, well, we don't know because they don't. Well, we're not releasing anything, but, you know, that, that changes you forever. He's never going to be the same person. We're never going to see Michael Schumacher again in any light, in any way, shape, form that we had in the past. So we get to live vicariously through his son. Right. So, cool with me. I'm down with that. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's, get, this, uh, this, Let's the, get this show on the road. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of show on the road, holy moly, can you believe it? We've got almost an hour. Wow. Wow. How about that? Okay. I would like to thank our co-host, Ronies. You're welcome. For joining us today and for being part of this great and awesome show. And I would also like to thank our sponsors, uh, www.cccresorts. Uh, for uh, sponsoring us and for being part of uh, what we're doing here. And we can't wait for uh, uh, all kinds of great things to happen and to come. Uh, appreciate you uh, listening and tuning in. Um, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. You can check out the Facebook page. Um, that's the Steel Flyers All Sports Network page on Facebook. And you can also check out the website at www.steelflyers.com. Thank you all very much for listening. Just remember, folks, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.